Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, they tried to arrest me. Uh, they paid a Barbadian lawyer in excess of two hundred thousand dollars to investigate me and the National Lodges Authority. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? After the votes were counted in Denver enough after as the, after the last general election, I increased my margin. <laughs> and the foolishness and stupidness of ministers account. Yes. As I said when I was in opposition, I will repeat today. The day you can come with evidence That's right. where a dollar at the NLA was used and was not used in conformity with the act that governs the NLA, where it states that the money must be used for youth development and sports, come and get me. Mr. Speaker, I crave, I crave your indulgence, Mr. Speaker, to express continued get well wishes to the MP for Babono, who's not here with us today, the Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, who I'm sure is listening, and I'm sure if she was here today, Mr. Speaker, in her own unique style. She would have made a very passionate contribution to the matter that is before the Parliament today. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the motion to secure $80 million for the National Lottery Authority to help bolster and improve sporting infrastructure in this country, in particular the Darren Sami Stadium um, ahead of the ICC Cricket World Cup. Mr. Speaker, $80 million being borrowed for the sports fraternity is yet another demonstration of our government's conviction that sport is a viable vehicle for which the human potential can be realized. Mr. Speaker, the record of the St. Lucia Labour Party in the realm of sports development is one that I am proud of and one I can identify with and one, Mr. Speaker, I will continue to associate with. But before I go into the substantive part of my presentation, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to respond to some of the utterances that came from the other side, the member for Shuzel and the member for Mikud South. Mr. Speaker, the member for Shuzel assumes a posture and a demeanor in the House that if you've not been here for long enough, you will believe that he means no harm, he is objective, and he supports what the government puts forward. But Mr. Speaker, with his quiet demeanor, there is a nastiness that characterizes his disposition in the House. When he spoke, Mr. Speaker, he said or intimated that the St. Lucia Labour Party, whilst in opposition, chided the UWP for investments made at the time on the Soufre Stadium. Mr. Speaker, I was on the other side of this parliamentary divide. When the Larissus playing field had been completed, and Mr. Speaker, from the bills of quantities to the receipts, were brought to this parliament to try and ridicule me and make it seem as if I had engaged in acts of illegality by simply, as the minister responsible for sports, ensuring that monies from the NLA and the Ministry of Sports went into Denry North to develop a facility for the children and grandchildren of people who had toiled diligently on the banana fields of this country to bring in millions of dollars in the form of revenue to pay public servants and to develop infrastructure. And just for developing the Larissus playing field, I was called all kinds of names. You've heard about the minister's account. It did not stick during the campaign, and I will not even dignify some of the accusations that have been leveled at me, Mr. Speaker, with a response. I will say, as I would have said before, all you need to do is to find the date at the bank when the account was established. And you will find, Mr. Speaker, that corresponding with the date when the account was established, I was an information technology teacher at the Denry-based Clendon Mason Memorial Secondary School. Mm. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition, and it is very hard to have a very objective, objective um, parliamentary exchange with an individual, Mr. Speaker, who appears to have no shame. Because, Mr. Speaker, the member tried to make the House believe that 
there was an account where the then Minister of Sports could have made payments on his own. Mr. Speaker, if you take that to the kindergarten students at the old York Combined School, they would laugh at you. But this is what political desperation does. And the member has had a very miserable day. Because from the moment he set foot in this chamber, he came to create mayhem and mischief and thought that he could have thrown the government off its feet with the whole election of a deputy speaker. So Mr. Speaker, foolishly, he took to the media, he wrote to whoever he had to write to, and he threatened that today he was going to have his day in parliament and throw the government off. But he was served a curveball. And you should have seen the expression on his face across the table, Mr. Speaker, when the member for Viewfort South was elected deputy speaker. So that explains why we've seen all the incoherence. And I've never seen presentations so flat and so devoid of substance than what has come from him today. And he wants to, Mr. Speaker, resurrect talk about minister's account. Two days after we stage one of the most successful sporting events in this country. And Mr. Speaker, I will add my voice to that of my colleagues who spoke glowingly about the hosting of champs in Sufre on Sunday. And Mr. Speaker, I want to start off by congratulating the member for Gruzili and Minister for Youth Development and Sports. I want to congratulate him and his team, Mr. Speaker. And we were on the field together from morning, Mr. Speaker, and I could have seen the confidence with which he was striding across the turf, walking through the stands. A man who was well pleased with something he had invested so much time in. Mr. Speaker, I want to also place on the record my gratitude to the many principals and teachers who went to Sufre on Sunday to ensure that this event turned out to be the success that it was. Mr. Speaker, very importantly, very, very importantly, the physical education teachers at our various secondary schools must be commended for making the sacrifice on a weekend to be there with their students, to motivate the students, Mr. Speaker, and to ensure that the meet was a successful one. The fire service must be commended for being on hand to provide support, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I know oftentimes we speak about young people being deviant and not wanting to conform to the school rules and even the rules of society. But today, Mr. Speaker, I want to place on the parliamentary record how grateful I am to the thousands of school children who went to Sufre to support their, their, their classmates and their schools. Mr. Speaker, save and except for one minor skirmish at the end of the meet, our students were exemplary in terms of how they behave at, at the meet. Mr. Speaker, the sponsors, and I'm sure the minister will speak glowingly about First National Bank for injecting $100,000 into, into, into the event. And it would be remiss of me, Mr. Speaker, not to single out for special mention the acting assistant superintendent of police responsible for the Supreme Police Station in the person of Kim Roy Rennie, Mr. Speaker, for the manner in which he marshaled his troops. Mr. Speaker, his was a very serious demeanor. Mr. Speaker, he did not leave anything to chance, and he was very thorough with his men and women in ensuring that the activity was properly policed and that, Mr. Speaker, we had an incident-free meet. Mr. Speaker, I made it my business to stay back long after the meet came to an end. And I drove through the streets of Sufre just to ensure that students who should have been on their way home were not congregating in isolated areas on, on, on their own volition. But instead, Mr. Speaker, an hour and 15 minutes thereabout after the meet was completed, we could not have found a single child on the streets of Sufre. They had to hop onto their buses and made their way homes. We made calls late into the evening, and the majority of teachers and principals with whom I spoke, Mr. Speaker, confirmed that the students got to their homes on time. So, Mr. Speaker, the minister must be commended. Ours is a government with vision. But going back to the member for Schweizer, Mr. Speaker, he spoke about the Lafargue playing field and how works on the Lafargue playing field were stopped. Let me tell you what was stopped. Let me tell you what was stopped when the United Workers' Party administration came out with the Belarus doctrine. My apologies, Member for Suzel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I rise on a point of order because the member is misleading the House. Mr. Speaker, the member said 
that I, that I indicated in my contribution that work on the LAFAG field was stopped. I have never made such a statement, and the member needs to retract it. Thank you. M member for member for Henry North, from my recollection, that statement was not made to you. Mr. Speaker, speak. the statement is withdrawn. Mr. Speaker, but things have been stopped. And if not, at the Lafag playing field, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that in Denry North, when I was the minister responsible for youth development and sports, we had a cricket program being run for the young people of that constituency. But consistent with the United Workers' Party doctrine, Mr. Speaker, of opposition members not having a voice, the cricket program that was being run for the young people of Denry North was stopped. And you know why, Mr. Speaker? Not because the program wasn't necessary, you know, but because the MP for Denry North belonged to the St. Lucia Labour Party. The volleyball program which we instituted in Denry North, where one of the most celebrated national volleyball coaches in this country, Mr. Dennis Sinclair, Mr. Speaker, used to travel on afternoons to expose the young people of Denry North to the rudiments of volleyball, Mr. Speaker, because their parents, on election day in the majority, went into the five polling divisions of Denry North to vote for me in the majority and retain me as parliamentary rep. The young volleyballers, Mr. Speaker, had to suffer the fate of seeing their program cut short. The netballers in Denry North suffered the same fate. And even a sympathizer of the United Workers Party in the constituency who was running a fitness program, Mr. Speaker, again, because the program was being executed in Denry North, and the people of Denry North decided that they were going to vote for Sean Edward and not the other candidate, that program was stopped and cut short. So when the member comes in here and gives the impression, Mr. Speaker, that he's objective and he wants to speak about national development in a way that is all-encompassing, Mr. Speaker, that is predicated on hypocrisy. And I do not believe the member is genuine with those utterances. Our record in terms of sports development in this country, Mr. Speaker, is second to none. I recall, Mr. Speaker, during the last Labour Party administration, we instituted a program known as the Playing Field Maintenance Program, where every morning in St. Lucia, approximately 100 people were leaving home and they were going to work, Mr. Speaker, not to take their place in a factory or in an office, but they were going to look after the playing facilities of this country. And Mr. Speaker, you know what we inherited prior to 2011? The majority of playing fields in this country were abandoned. How do you expect sports to thrive if you are not prepared to invest in the same facilities that would cause young people to come forward and give expression to their talent? So when our government comes, Mr. Speaker, and we are guaranteeing $80 million for sports infrastructural upgrade, Mr. Speaker, this is a motion and a position that will always receive the support of the member for Denry North. The leader of the opposition made it seem as if there was a problem with guaranteeing monies for the National Lotteries Authority. Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that a government has come here to guarantee monies for a statutory entity. We've done it for SLASPA. We've done it for SLASPA before. We've done it for so many other entities. And then he questions the ability of the National Lotteries Authority to repay the money. Mr. Speaker, I am not aware of any instance where the St. Lucia National Lotteries Authority was called upon to service its debt and for the Lotteries Authority to have defaulted. Mr. Speaker, I believe that St. Lucia is on an upward trajectory in terms of the performances of our athletes and how they give recognition to our country. And with this minister responsible for youth development and sports, given the commitment and the passion that he brings, Mr. Speaker, to his office, I am extremely encouraged that St. Lucia will be this place where, where young budding athletes, Mr. Speaker, will be encouraged and opportunities will be created for them. Mr. Speaker, the member spoke about the playing field at Lafargue. Mr. Speaker, do you know that between 2011 and 2016, after the Larissus playing field was upgraded, for five years of UWP rule, 
absolutely no maintenance intervention at the Larissus playing field. But they speak about securing monies from the Taiwanese. They speak about investing in sports. But Mr. Speaker, you cannot be serious about sports development if your interventions are going to be specific to constituencies that are aligned to your party. And for five years, there were six of us in opposition. Not a single penny, Mr. Speaker, came our way as duly elected parliamentary representatives to make any intervention on any sporting facility in our respective constituencies. So when you hear out of convenience that the member for Schwezel and the member for Mikud South want to stand here and posture, Mr. Speaker, and make it seem as if they've done so much for sport, Mr. Speaker, we have to be on our guard. Ours is a government that believes in the holistic development of the children. Ours is a government based on evidence, Mr. Speaker, that programs for young people in this country, irrespective of where in St. Lucia you are from. Ours is a government that will make the intervention at the school level and all other levels, Mr. Speaker, not taking into consideration that you are from a constituency that was sympathetic to the United Workers' Party. Mr. Speaker, there's a lot more I want to say about sports development and how our government is on the right path. But I am also aware, Mr. Speaker, that the budget debate starts in a few days' time, and a lot of the pronouncements I would love to make here this afternoon, I think it would be best that I reserve them for next week, when, Mr. Speaker, we will have a full house, as we say, and the talking points and the sound bites will resonate with the right people in the right places at the right time. So, Mr. Speaker, with this brief con um, contribution, I wholeheartedly endorse and support the motion to guarantee a loan of approximately $80 million for sporting infrastructure upgrades in this country.